blepharospasm is dystonia affecting the upper face. The upper face is involved with eye closure, people have excessive blinking, increased frequency of eye blinking. Most of the time these blinking movements can be sustained and they provoke functional blindness to people with blepharospasm. After many years and with aging, symptoms may spread to the lower part of the face and people may develop MAGE syndrome, which is the combination of blepharospasm and oromandibular dystonia. In that case, patients may develop symptoms also in their lips, in their tongue and in their mandible. Blepharospasm is the second most frequent form of dystonia after cervical dystonia. However, in Southern Europe appear to be the most frequent. There are many epidemiological studies, which are studies that measure the frequency of a condition. And those studies have been conducted in Italy and they have demonstrated a higher prevalence of blepharospasm in this country, which appear to be the most frequent form of dystonia. So based on the country and the method of the study, we have different prevalence for blepharospasm, ranging from 20 to 80 cases per million inhabitants. Surely this is a very frequent form of dystonia and surely we have many powerful interventions to treat, such as botulinum toxin. Recognition and correct diagnosis is the most important thing. Those people often are referred to the ophthalmologists and they're not recognized. And for this reason, it's important to recognize the symptom earlier on. Botulinum toxin is a very effective treatment for blepharospasm. However, a very small percentage of patients may not benefit or may have a very short benefit for a short time. In this case, I have seen very creative solutions from my patient themselves. For example, I can remember two or three patients using special glasses which allow to pinch the eyelids and lift them up, at least for reading. We really need to pursue more research in finding other solutions and non-invasive solutions in people with blepharospasm. In the past, some people with blepharospasm have been also treated with surgery that was focused on the eyelids. Those were people not responding to botulinum toxin and they underwent myectomy procedure. What is myectomy? It's a surgery procedure that is focused on the eyelid and it cuts the eyelid with the aim of relieving the closure of the eyelid. However, at the long term, it's not known how this procedure is effective and surely the result seems to be poor. Regarding the brain stimulation, this is not a procedure that we consider usually in people with blepharospasm, given the risk of the procedure, the surgical risk and the difficulty to maintain in the system. There are not enough data on the effectiveness and of the breast stimulation in this population of patients, given also the fact that most of the subject responds to botulinum toxin. For oral medication, again, we don't have many evidence in the scientific literature, although we sometimes use them, especially those medications that decrease anxiety and then they can decrease the blinking when anxiety is also involved. Clonazepam can be a medication used in this patient. We don't have enough data about anticholinergic drugs in people with blepharospasm. But the most important thing is to remind that botulinum toxin should be employed and also with different formulation if patients do not achieve a response. Botulinum toxin is injected in the muscle around the eyes. The main muscle is the orbicularis oculi and is injected effectively with a benefit that might last three or four months. There are few reports in the medical literature of using sensory tricks 
has uh, admitted to treat blepharospasm uh, next to botulinum toxin. For example, few patients report an improvement with touching this part of the face laterally. So some of them have developed again special glasses which press laterally on this part of the face and they may improve the pharospasm. Still, these are very creative solutions, but they have the rationale of the sensory tricks or the antagonist chest. One very important thing to mention about blepharospasm is that typically blepharospasm improves with speaking and it is unmasked by not moving the face. This is actually the opposite uh, on what happened to other types of dystonia, where other types of dystonia are unmasked by the movement in other body parts. In blepharospasm, speaking significantly improves usually the symptoms. However, there are exceptions. There are patients with blepharospasm that is just induced by speaking. It's more rare, but is described. The role of sensory trick and antagonist just in dystonia is very important on a clinical and a research point of view. If we understand better the mechanism of generation of these tricks or antagonist just, we may understand better how to modulate and improve dystonia and we can incorporate them into rehabilitation strategies and non-invasive way to treat dystonia. Still, there is a lot of road to make, but this is a very important pathway for the researcher and the clinician to pursue in order to help people with dystonia. Mm -hmm.